Hello, Stan. Hi, Kasha. How are you doing today? Good. Nice to see you again, Stan. Stan is the Chief Marketing Officer at PulseForge, and I think he's joined us today from Austin, right? Unless you're traveling. Yes, Austin, Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. We're having very temperate weather today. It's, it's not cold, uh, but it's also not hot, so it's uh, quite nice. Lucky you. I wish I could say the same. I'm in Frankfurt, and it is snowing outside. So. <laughs> but we've had people from Quebec, you know, so I, I wouldn't like to complain. Um, so anyway, uh, the stage is yours, uh, Stan. You have, I think, some 10 minutes or so to present, and then we go into Q&A. Sure. Uh, thank you, Kasha. Uh, what I wanted to do today was to, to pick up on the theme of uh, photovoltaics and, and looking at some things that are happening now and how that impacts uh, going forward into the future. And so we'll be talking a bit about perovskites as well as part of that, of course. Uh, a quick background about uh, Novacentrix and PulseForge uh, specifically. We recently had an event. We spun out PulseForge from Novacentrix. Folks that are uh, familiar with Novacentrix for, for quite some time uh, will be interested to know that PulseForge, the equipment side, has spun out. But altogether, this operation has been in place now for over 20 years. We are based in Austin, as we, as we mentioned. And we have been developing really deep tech innovations around nanomaterials uh, and then also related to uh, related to uh, thermal processing with our photonic carrying tools and we'll talk about how we're applying those today to photovoltaics our customers are applying those to photovoltaics but we also have quite a bit of background in in overall printed hybrid flexible electronics also batteries and then branching out from electronics applications we also have some work happening in uh, processing optics uh, food safety is becoming a topic, and uh, we bring our, our products team and, and collaborations to bear to solve these, these topics. We have had some commercialization successes, cell phone displays, RFID tags, uh, some forms of photovoltaics, uh, and, and we are also in uh, vehicles on the, on the ink side as well, so that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. But when we look at photovoltaics, uh, one of the things that we like to do is we like to touch base with NREL here in the U.S. They really are a touch point for, for what is happening in the photovoltaic space. And they've got some really nice overviews of uh, trends and topics and concerns and, and roadmap opportunities, as well as, of course, putting out the, the famous performance charts that, uh, that we've seen today and that we also uh, and our customers reference quite importantly. Uh, so I've attached a, a reference here for folks that are interested in going to NREL to, to look at that. Uh, but NREL identifies system capital costs, operation and maintenance expenses, uh, so, so post-installation expenses for, for the, the photovoltaics technologies themselves, and then, of course, lifetime energy yield. Now, uh, as Monica mentioned uh, really well, I thought, there are quite a few applications. So, so photovoltaics falls into a lot of different kinds of uh, categories, and depending on the use case, different of these attributes will be more or less important. And so it's very important for us to pay attention, of course, to what our customers are interested in. And they really are distilling into performance efficiency. They're looking at manufacturing scalability, including materials cost and, and production throughput as they try to migrate maybe from a, a champion uh, lab result into a, 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 an enterprise, a successful enterprise. And then when we think about different use cases, we're looking at form factors, we're looking at aesthetics. For example, if they're being placed in consumer electronics or even wearables or integrated into vehicles. And then of course that has a direct bearing on weight. And of course what our customers are doing on this is using our photonic carrying tools. And this is a, a quick schematic of how the flash lamp equipment that we develop uh, and produce is affecting the performance and, and results of the materials that are in the uh, in the exposure path. So when we break down the, the applications that our customers are, are working on, this is, a, of course, a super simple cartoon of, of a photovoltaic system. Of course, they get elaborately complex, and this is very much a, 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 a top-down illumination structure. But when we break it down, it's helpful for us to identify that there are a few key application areas, uh, and really that transcends different material types inside these functional groups. And so when we look at transparent materials, transparent conductors, we have customers that are doing everything from uh, the traditional transparent conductive oxides, uh, including some work with sputter coating and some work with uh, different kinds of solution processing. 
Uh, also, some really interesting work has been going on for quite some time with conductive nanowires. And of course, this relates